Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And right now I wanna share with you a photo story that I captured of the band Mr. Wives when they came through Philly to play the Fillmore the other day. Now, I'm not gonna go through the technical aspects of how I shot the photos, what are the settings, what could I have done better. I simply wanna share with you the mental state that I'm in when I'm on a photo shoot and, and basically tell you about the story as we go through the images. Now, I will make videos in the future where you can edit some of the raw files. I'll give you all of the full res exports to go and look at that I'm talking about in the photo story, but I wanna save those technical videos for another time. So to start it off, my main thing when I go out to do a photo shoot is I'm actually worried, will I be able to come back and or will I be able to capture fantastic images when I go out and shoot? Now, I've already photographed the Mr. Wives during their music video, and I got some awesome stuff. And so the challenge and, and the thing that worries me the most is, will I be able to do this again? And I, yes, I have a really good feeling that, yeah, I'll be able to do this again, but I still worry about it. It still is in my mind on every single photo shoot that will I be able to capture awesome shots, tell a great story, and it's always a mental challenge. And that's what's going through my mind when I'm out there on these shoots. So it's a matter of just finding the images. Now, starting the day off, you're unloading the van. Actually, they, they have a tour bus, but they were unloading and, and going in. I've edited down some. I picked, I think, like 95 images here to go through in a photo story. And it's just about um, telling the story of the day. The band, really, they still set up their own sets. They played to 2,500 to 3,000 people, but they're setting up all of their own equipment. They're setting up the, the house, in this case, from their album, Our House, uh, or Our Own House. They went and painted this, and they travel with it on set. And I'm sure you're wondering, how do I get all access to do something like this? Well, the band gave me the access to do this. Now, when I was in their last music video, I was, uh, let's turn around here. I was in the last music video because my friends were filming it, and I decided I'd bring out my camera and just show them what I'm capable of doing. So I got some amazing photos, and I printed them all a photo book when it was over, little uh, six by eight photo book from Adorama Pics, and they absolutely loved it. The images were really good. I, I will tell you they were really good. I was really happy with what I got. So when they came through Philly, or they were coming through Philly, I said, hey, I'd like to come out and shoot. Uh, I'm gonna trade you access, the all access, for allowing you to use the images online, anything that I capture. Because I wanna shoot, because I know in the situation that I'm in, I love shooting. And I also have the website that I can share these images with you guys, so not only do they get something out of it, I get content out of it, plus awesome photos, hopefully, and you guys get some other stuff to help learn from uh, when you're out there shooting. So they were coming through, and I, and I sent an email to the guy in the band, and I'm like, hey, I'd like to come out and shoot. I'm not going to charge you anything. I just would like all access to capture awesome photos. And so he passed me along to the tour manager. Tour manager, he's like, yep, remember you from the set? Uh, we'll do this. Not a problem. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, though, he just made the decision because he got it. He understands that it's the right thing for the band to have me come out there and shoot the images because I'm probably gonna get some really cool things that benefit them and it, and it also benefits me because if you haven't heard of Mr. Wives out there, you're gonna go onto Spotify or onto YouTube right now and give a listen. And maybe you become a fan and you go check out the show. So they gave me all access, no questions asked, to do stuff like this. They let me do whatever I want. So here's just all the stuff set, getting ready to get set up on the stage. And I'm just there throughout the day, playing around, shooting what I wanna shoot, going to where I wanna go, and, and just having fun. And so these are the images that I'm capturing. Let's see, I've made some notes. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, and I'll talk about that shortly. But it, it is amazing. I spent 12 hours with them. It's amazing what you can do in a 12-hour period of time. The photo stories that you're able to capture are incredible when you have the access. Because not many people get to be where I'm at right here on stage with the band as they're setting up before sound check, and then go out to eat with them or, or just go hang out and talk and then get, create, you know, get access to get photos of everything. I like this image because... 
you, you've got multiple people in the band setting things up as well as the crew. It's framed by the orange. Now, I'm not calling this super technical that I'm talking about this. This is just me telling you what I like about the images. It's framed by the orange amps. We've got the stage, the, the, the riser right here in the middle with the drummer setting up his kit. We've got the lights going up here. We've got the crew working on it. And it's just a cool image that works. This is all right. I love using things out of focus like the drum kit to draw you into the center of the image or just draw you into the subject like that. You know, so it's the access that you get, which is amazing. And stuff like this is backstage at the Fillmore. The, uh, the, the door was open behind me as a garage door. Uh, so that's why this cool warm, uh, you have the, the, the yellow light of the inside of the building. And you've got a blue light coming in from outside because that's the daylight. But I just love the candidates like this. And so here he is signing um, some of these posters. The whole band was signing them. And then Mandy did this. And what's interesting is I have Mr. Wives in down here in one of the other photos that I took. And I'll probably explain it when I do the technical thing is I actually cut off the Mr. Wives in one of the photos. That's why I ended up selecting this one because it shows that in there. Um, I probably could recover some more if I, if I pulled back on the recovery slider. But I love the tones and the gradation here from the blacks in the corners that it just highlights her right here and then walking outside to go do a group photo uh, basically there's a sign up above that they're, they're pointing to that was switching around to say Mr. Wives and in this case well I wanted to get this shot first because I couldn't really see the sign up above so they're just hanging out playing around shooting their Instagram photos and, and I'm doing this and so then we set up I threw them these cones that were there blocking the parking area and there you have it um, it blinked on there for like three seconds or two seconds and I got the photo at the Fillmore with Mr. Wives underneath uh, with the tour bus in there. Because I always think it's important to have the tour bus in, especially wherever it's parked. I make a thing of it if I'm out with a band uh, that it's interesting to get a picture of the tour bus in every city that you're in because it ends up being interesting. So here they are reviewing their photo for their Instagram. Um, this is a, a portrait, a painting on the, the Fillmore. The F is painted there by a well-known artist. I, I don't even know. He's well-known, but I don't know his name. Uh, well, it's there, Enix, E-I-N-E-X, -E -E period, colon at the beginning, who painted this. And, and so here's a shot that I actually dabbled with, uh, you know, the, the C word, the cropping. I wish I did shoot it tighter. Um, something more along the lines of this when they jumped. Yes, it would have been tighter, but I'm glad that I kept all of this in there and the old information, the, in the industries that it says here about the building. And my goal was to keep it symmetric. I've got one light here, one light here. I didn't even see this canister, but that doesn't kill me. Um, and the band wanted to do this. They wanted to do this type of shot. And this is just a cool, fun shot outside during the day. It's about 1 o'clock, 12.30, something along those lines. Just getting a cool photo like this. And they're, and they're a fun band. I'll just tell you, they have so much fun. They smile and laugh so much. And here's um, Mandy and her boyfriend, who's also in the, ba in the band, walking. We're, we're about to go to La Colombe to get some coffee. I just love the tones of this image that they're not looking at me. Um, the image prior that I didn't show you is them giving me the finger just for fun. But, you know, that will be in the final images that I do upload. But I wanted to narrow down the story a little bit. But I just love these type of images. I wish the tour bus was in there, but this is just walking down the sidewalk. Um, we get to La Colombe. Um, just, I'm glad she sat there because the window is at my back. I probably would have asked her to move to that side if she would have sat on the other side. That's one of the things you do as a photographer is you kind of direct them and be like, you know what, the light's going to be better here. And look, they just were themselves. Just just being themselves here. Look, I mean, yeah, flattering, right? But so what? It's fun. They're having fun, and I'm there to capture it. And they're just giving me the access. And that's what access is all about, is when the, when the artists just get it. And they want you to get cool stuff, and they don't give you crap. And they let you into their world. And they're just being candid. And I'm capturing the candids. And just having fun. And so we were walking back to the venue for sound check. And, and this girl over here, she, she was lost. They couldn't find the venue, which was a couple blocks the other way. So they, they saw Mandy and they saw the rest, a uh, couple of members from the band. That's Sarah in the back, who's Mandy's sister. Um, 
So they stopped on the street, and these are the cool pictures that you can get just walking around. Uh, this mini chair, you know, that's one of these things. We were walking past Jinxed, which is a, uh, a, a vintage store, Antiques, and she saw this little tiny chair and thought it would be funny. Mandy thought it would be funny to bring back to the tour manager uh, and have him sit in it instead of the other chair. And so capturing behind-the-scenes stuff like that's great. Now, this is one of those images that messes with me. I love the black and white, but I also love the purple of the color, the color version. I, ha I, ca I can't decide for the life of me. I am drawn to the black and white like I have always been drawn to black and white. And the Fillmore is classic. But the Fillmore, you know, this purple, I don't know if the color in the bottom right-hand corner or the middle right-hand corner, the day glow colors on the wall, really hurts the image or helps. But you can see the difference in the glowing of the lights up above. I, I mean, I'm, I feel the color. It's a little softer on her. And I just, I like it. So I, I have to figure it out. But, you know, sound check. I'm on stage for sound check. How many times have you heard bands say you gotta, <coughs> excuse me, clear the room? We can't have anybody hear us sound check. I can't stand when bands get all pretentious like that. But the cool thing is they don't they don't care. They want you to be there, and I wanted to be there to capture this. So they're just giving me this ability. I love this photo. It's just Mandy listening to the band talking and and just hanging out. Shots like this, really cool framing. Uh, you've got the cross lightings going. Everything's pretty even left to right, top to bottom, side to side. I love that shot. Uh, here's the uh, the lighting director. He was great, did a great job out there. Um, and this is a cool shot for him to share. Now, the, the cool thing about meeting tour managers on the road and lighting people is that they know everybody. And when they know everybody, they can share the... They can tell their friends, like, this guy is awesome. If you come through Philly or New York or anywhere on the East Coast, you should have him come out and shoot you. And this is just how you get more gigs. And I am not afraid to ask for the all-access. Because I know that if I don't ask for the all-access, I'm not going to get the shots that tell the story of the freaking day. If all somebody limits me to is three songs in the pit, I don't even want to do it. I almost don't want to shoot for Live Nation over at this venue anymore because it's just three songs and out of live stuff. I just, it, it, you just don't get those killer, awesome shots like this that you would get unless you have this access. Now, this is backstage right before the band is about to go on stage. Um, I, I'm just setting myself up using this natural frame of the doorway because the bands are going to be coming out of door number one and door number two, most likely, or actually they already moved from two to one. And so I wanted to get the exposure right and get the band coming out. So here they are starting to walk towards the stage and just playing it up to the camera. Here we go. We're going to walk out there. We're going to get there. And then Mandy followed. And then we went up to the stage. Now, I wanted to some uh, uh, images of them going up on stage, but it was pitch black backstage and there was no way to get this. So I'm at the soundboard now. I wanted to stay out of the pit. This photographer, by the way, who's in the pit holding their D750 up or whatever camera that is, that is an absolute no-no. That is so distracting. Do not, especially when you've got, you have a, 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 a tiltable screen, don't hold up the camera. It's really distracting to everybody trying to watch the show. Um, so I went to the soundboard, so I stayed out of the pit so I didn't get in the way of everybody else. And and that's why I started in the back. Uh, what's cool at the soundboard is they had one barricade which has a step up so I could get these type of shots. Very difficult lighting because there are so many lights. They were so bright, these LEDs, that it made it hard to get some of the, uh, the shots. But Mandy did have a spotlight on her, which did help. Uh, a shot like this is, is great. Um, I didn't even notice at the bottom I have the, the railing still in there. Uh, it doesn't distract me because it's actually straight. It would have been better if I didn't have it in there, but you know what, as a frame, I don't think it hurts it. Uh, this is a cool shot for the lighting director. It's great because you see how packed the freaking house is for the band. You cannot move. So that's awesome that they basically, I think it was almost a sellout. There may have only been a handful of tickets available, but that's an awesome room that 2,500 or so people in for them to sell, almost sell it out is fantastic. A band really on the rise. Love that shot. So then I went into the pit and it was difficult to shoot in the pit because you can see that the stage is about chest level on me. So we're looking at about five feet high. Um, she decided Mandy jumped off of this. I got lucky that I had some good lighting for this situation and that the lights weren't all shooting straight back into the camera. So I always try to use the, the, the background lights like this. I always try to center the musician with these lights coming around them so you get that nice effect uh, to give you that cool shot. 
Um, so I got lucky to get that. Capture the, uh, keep my shutter speed fast enough to freeze her jumping. And then cool shots like this are, are, are great. So then I didn't realize that she was gonna sit down on stage and start to sing one of the songs. So that's why I was in the pit for this. Um, and it's good to get the reaction of you have her, you have the crowd, black and white worked better. In this case, we've got the color worked better. You can see how e in extremely bright the LEDs are in the back. Very hard to do. Like if she didn't have a spotlight on her, this would be a wasted image. So the person that you see in the pit right now is uh, Mandy's sister, Sarah, who does many things on tour. Amongst those, she's starting to become the tour photographer. She has a fantastic eye. And yeah, she's only using a kit lens here with one of like a Canon 70D or 60D or something, or, or it's a Rebel. It may even be a Rebel, but they're getting her set up with something from uh, Borrow Lenses to get a 5D Mark III and to get better glass because she has the eye and now she just needs some of the better gear to take it to the next level, especially that she's on tour, uh, out there touring. She does a cool job, but what's cool about the photo is that she's photographing her sister, and it's the two of them together doing something that they love, and that, you know, personally, on a personal level, that's a great image for them. Still some more of those. Tighter shot. Um, while I was in the pit, while she was sitting, I was able to get a shot like this, which is great. And then I decided to spend some time on stage to get side images because the lights were so bright in the pit as you can see from these images that it made it difficult that and all these monitors let me go back a couple you see all the monitors on this on the stage you see this the monitors are these things right here these are steps uh, a step thing a riser so that she can stand on and and everybody can see her but all these monitors make it very difficult to get photos now monitors are integral to the artist to be able to hear themselves even with in ears uh, if they don't if they have them in or if they don't have them in um, so that's why I moved up to the stage because the harsh light, it's actually, it made it awesome because now I'm shooting with the light, not shooting into the light to get shots like this side stage with the 70 to 200 um, to get her moving around. She moves a ton. These are awesome shots. I am really happy with this because like I said, I worry every time I go out there. Like I know that the lights are going to be difficult there and am I able to capture great shots? Uh, it's always a challenge. It's a great challenge, but again, it's amazing what you can get in 12 hours. Um, and, and what also is cool is when you sit down to process images like this, how they come to life in processing. You take the raw file and you start to bring them to life and you challenge yourself. Is it the black and white? Is it the color? How is it like the thick? Look how thick this is. The color is fantastic. The clarity is incredible. You get lucky with some shots like this where um, one of the lights in the back, they had these little strobey things that go off. I don't think the strobe went off on this, but I think a backlight went on bright as he was turning, as Will was turning to get this shot. You can see that room lights went on and it gave me the ability to get this type of shot. Now on stage, you know, the pit shots can be really boring over and over because they're just um, the same thing over and over. In this case, I like showing the band, uh, showing the stands, uh, the, the crowd and everything. This was a kid that Mandy picked out of the stage who was just unbelievably happy to get picked to dance. Um, and then, you know, being able to show the crowd and the spotlight shining in on Mandy is what it's all about. You want to see the crowd. You don't want to get stuck in the pit. That's why the pit just becomes boring. And then Todd, who so happens to be in both of the Mr. Wives dance videos, they asked him to come out and dance and do his part. And he did. And he danced. And there you have it. One more backstage, and then you've got the band here with some of the people from Live Nation just getting a picture. And, th and that's the photo story. That's what I live for when I take these photos, is telling a photo story. And yeah, it is a challenge time and time again mentally to go out there and think, can I get great images again? And I worry. I, I seriously was worrying here that would I be able to get awesome images again like I got when they were on set uh, for their video shoot, and I'm, and I'm happy with what I got. The story is great, and it's just amazing what you can get over a 12-hour period of time, from about 12 to 12, spending the day with these guys, capturing the candids. I have another book of images that I could put together and give them. I have another set for my website that shows photo stories. And on, on my website, I don't want to just showcase the single photos. I love showcasing the photo stories because that's what I want to do. It's, to me, it's not about that one image. It's about the 45, the 100 in this case, 90 some images that I showcase. It's about the progression of the day and the story that I want to convey. And I may edit it down again to under 40 images for, to make it easier for people to see that. 
uh, when they're looking at my site, but it's about the photo stories. So again, it's amazing to have the access. When the band trusts you enough to let you into your inner sanctum or let you into their inner sanctum to capture whatever it is that you want to capture, it's just great. Now, it hasn't always been that way, and I know a lot of people are like, well, how do you get that access? Well, for a decade, for a long time, I pushed to get backstage. I asked for access, but one of the things that definitely helped with getting access was having a book of work to show people, not just on your phone, but actually carrying something, or something around, because at the time, we didn't have iPhones, but I would ask, and I would say that they looked at the work and got it. Because it's not arrogant to say that I, I know my work is good. And so the photo stories that I've captured in the past have helped me get access to these bands to say yes to letting me in and, and having all access. Now, you may be saying, well, how do I get all access if I don't have that work? You have to figure it out. You have to go and start shooting with the smaller bands to build up to get to the bigger bands. Show them work, and they'll let you in. So again, uh, having the all access is great. It's amazing what you can capture in 12 hours. And really, the photo story that I left with, uh, that, I'm, that I'm, I'm really happy with what I captured. And, and again, thank you to the band for letting me in and giving me the access. And, and in the future, I will be making more videos uh, in regards to these images, I'll let you download some raw files, I'll do some editing videos, I'll break down some of the things more technically, but this was just more talking about the photo story so that you get what's going through my mind and get to hear what I'm thinking about each image uh, that I'm capturing. So uh, that's where I'll leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.